Published, 1049 EST, January 9, 2018, Updated, 1211 EST, January 9, 2018 The Los Angeles Police Department has released body camera footage showing the moments leading up to an officer-involved shooting on Skid Row in 2015 that left a homeless black man dead, Charlie Africa Kunong. 43, was shot five times, including twice in the chest, during a tense confrontation with LAPD cops investigating reports that the man had threatened another person with a baseball bat on March 1, 2015. Kunan's shooting was captured on video recorded by a bystander and has been viewed by millions worldwide, sparking widespread outrage and protests in Los Angeles. The Los Angeles Police Department has released body camera footage showing the moments leading up to an officer-involved shooting on Skid Row in 2015 that left homeless man Charlie Africa Kunong, left. Dead officers repeatedly ordered Kunong to stand against a wall, but he ducked into his tent Sergeant Chan Syed is seen opening the flaps of the man's makeshift shelter to drag him out Officer Francisco Martinez hits the 43-year-old with a taser, causing him to flail his arms and stumble around wildly nearly three years later. At the request of the Los Angeles Times, the LAPD has agreed to release recordings from the responding officer's body cameras, showing the chain of events leading up to the fatal shots being fired at Kunong. The recording begins with LAPD cops having a hostile exchange with Kunong outside his tent on Skid Row. Deceased, Kunong, pictured in a February 2000 photo from Ventura County Sheriff's Office, was fatally shot five times by three LAPD officers during a 2015 incident on Skid Row. The officers repeatedly threatened to taser the seemingly uncooperative man. Sir, you will get hurt if you don't comply. This taser's gonna hurt, Sergeant Chan Syed warns Kunong who responds by saying, you don't let me express myself. Officer Francisco Martinez orders Kunong to stand against a nearby wall, but the man remains defiant and raises his voice, prompting another warning from police that he's going to get tasered. Kunong continues shouting and gesticulating in an animated manner at Martinez, who tells him sternly, don't walk up to me, go up against the wall. But Kunong defies the cop's orders and ducks into his makeshift shelter. He is heard screaming from inside the tent, listen, leave me alone. The officers open the flaps of the tent, and Syed tells Kunong, You've gotta step outside, man, we've gotta figure out what's going on. Come on, brother, just relax. The officers then force Kunong to the ground in order to restrain him, pictured bottom right. The video appears to show the pivotal moment the suspect grabbed the butt of this rookie cop's gun, leading to shots being fired. Sergeant Chan Syed is seen aiming his service weapon at Kunong and firing two rounds after another officer fired the first shot. Three officers shot five rounds at Kunong, killing him. Two are seen with weapons drawn from that point on. The situation rapidly escalates as Martinez apparently fires his stun gun at Kunong, who reacts to the shock by flailing his arms and stumbling wildly toward the officers, who force him to the ground. Stop resisting. An officer is heard shouting at Kunong, who is seen being held down by the cops, one of whom presses a taser against his leg. Just seconds later, rookie cop Joshua Velasky screams in a panic-tinged voice, he's got my gun. The first shot is then fired and Kunong screams, then Syed draws his service weapon and four more gunshots are heard. It was later concluded that Martinez fired once, and officer Daniel Torres and sergeant, Syed each fired twice, killing Kunong. Amateur footage showed Kunong swinging wildly at police officers after they tasered him on Skid Row on March 1, 2015. This video recorded by a bystander has been viewed by millions worldwide, sparking widespread outrage. Lap Chief Charlie Beck said at the time the shooting was justified because Kunong tried to grab a rookie police officer's gun after he had ignored commands and become combative. He said the officer's gun was later found partly cocked and jammed with one round of ammunition in the chamber and another in the ejection port, indicating a struggle for the weapon. The LAP PD on Monday released a screenshot from the body camera video showing the exact frame in which Kunong's hand appears to be grasping the butt of the officer's gun. An autopsy showed Kunong, a native of Cameroon who had been convicted of armed bank robbery in 2000, had methamphetamines and marijuana in his system when he died after having been shot five times. In February 2016, following an 11-month investigation, the Los Angeles Police Commission found Kunong's shooting justified as Kunong had tried to take an officer's gun but that one of the officer's tactics violated policy. The man's family has filed a $20 million lawsuit against the city and police department, calling the shooting a classic case of abuse of power and deadly force. Joshua P. Ovia Scott, the attorney representing Kunong's family in the lawsuit, said he was frustrated by the commission's finding. This is a cop-created killing, he said. It's hard to believe that six heavily armed and trained officers and one unarmed, 
lone homeless man on a sunny street on a sunny day results in those officers holding the man down to the concrete and shooting him in the chest and killing him. POV Scott reiterated his previous position on the shooting following Monday's release of the body camera footage and disputed the LAPD's assertion that the recording showed Kunan grabbing the officer's gun. In December 2016, the three officers who fired shots at Kunong were cleared in his death after the district attorney's office concluded that they acted in self-defense. The officers' reasonable assessments of the threat posed by Kunong were as grave and imminent as the officers perceived, prosecutors wrote in a memo. Dong posed a high likelihood of killing officers and civilians at the very instant that he was shot. Lin Chaiyu, Kunong's mother, speaks at a news conference in April 2015. Kunong's family have filed a $20 million lawsuit